the radius up a little bit and the power up a little bit we got a little bit of a brighter spot there in the center which looks nice right so I think that, I think that pays off a little bit so that's that's nice if I turn the radius down it'll be even more harsh pull it it'll pull away from the text a little bit yeah all right so I think that's yeah with it and without it all right yeah that's good so we got a nice little gradient there on the letters in the center I want to take our camera turn overlays off and we will scale our camera down so we'll scale the focal length down a little bit because I don't like the way it looks it looks because it's too big move it up a little bit GZ something like that um, and now we can do a little bit of animation with our text but what I want to do is it's the rotation is all in the center it's not in the center so if I were to go ahead and take this and rotate it around you can see it's rotating on the uh, little axis down there which I don't like so we're gonna go ahead and go to object set origin origin to geometry but now you can see it's gonna mess up the parenting so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and, and set the origin do to oops, set the origin to all of these um, but what we can do is we can actually unparent these for the time being since we're not moving them right now anyway So we'll go ahead and turn extras off because there's so many lines from things. It's bugging me uh, We will select all of the text. So all of these right here And we will they're all selected right did I miss anything? I don't know if I did let me do it one more time uh, I did I missed that one right there see I saw over here that it said all of them were selected. so if you if you see all the text letters and they're not selected then select the other one that you didn't get um, we're gonna hit alt uh, actually sorry yeah alt P to clear parent but if we clear that you see that all the the, the trans the transforms are gonna be messed up so uh, control P uh, keep transformation now they're all unparented but they are still in the same place that they were so that's nice we can go ahead and select them all I think we can do this with all of them at the same time if we can't that's a bummer but I think we can object set origin origin to geometry and we can thank God um, <laughs> um, now so if we were to go ahead and rotate this now you can see that they rotate in the center which is what I need so we can go ahead and select them all once again with the front front facing plane the last one that we select control P set parent to object and with the same thing for all these so we'll select all these with B then hold down shift select that one in the front and then we'll just parent all of these once again, um, which we could have done this. We could have, we could have done this before, but it's totally fine to do it now. It's better late than never, you know what I mean. Um, so we'll just select all these. Make sure the white one is the last one you've selected, and there we go. So I'll just keep no, I'll keep doing these until we have all of them. Like I said, if you have a lot of letters, it might be a bummer to have to change all of these layers all the time. And if you want to change what they say, it's going to be even more of a bummer. But that is, um, it's fine. It means if you really want to uh, to get this effect here, make sure they're all on the white. Yeah, they are. And I think we're good. All right, sweet. So now when we rotate these, they will all rotate on the style uh, center of the word, of the letter, rather. So they look super good like that. Now the thing we got to do is the animation, of course which can take a long time and I don't unfortunately have a song so this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and take a pause I'm gonna be back and I'm gonna grab a song and we're gonna animate the text to the song alright guys so I'm back a couple hours later I actually made a song just specifically for this intro <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and <laughs> open up a, uh, a new workspace down here by oop nope nope no 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 by dragging this up from the top and changing this to the what I'm looking for uh, video sequence editor I'm kinda out of it right now because uh, it's been a couple hours but uh, but yeah we're getting back into things here we got this beautiful styling once again uh, so we're gonna go to add and add in a new sound clip and open up our sound file alright so I have the styling clip right here but we're, we're gonna hit uh, add sound strip and now we have the audio of the clip in here which is nice Drag our in frame. You can hear it playing. And right about here, so on frame 242, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the, the animation because that's where I want the text intro kind of thing to start. Yeah, so we're going to start right there. Um, and it ends on it ends before the clip ends actually so so around 490 uh, maybe 490 
Um, so this is the full the full little piece that we're going to be working with right now today. So we can actually go ahead and close the video sequence, well, the strip, yeah, I guess the video sequence editor. Uh, we can go ahead and close that now by dragging that away. Uh, now, whenever we play this, uh, our audio will play with it so we can animate it properly. Now, we can go to playback and change this to uh, from no sync to AV sync so the audio and the visual are synced together. We can also turn on audio scrubbing because that helps a lot. Now, so... Um, we can go ahead and decide what we want to do now for the letters since they're all separate. That's why we separated them. Um, I'm coming up with some pretty good ideas that I hopefully uh, that hopefully will look pretty sweet. They'll look pretty stylish. -ish. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take a moment to uh, go to the beginning of our clip here. So maybe I actually start this a little bit earlier. So maybe on two, yeah, on two four on two forty we'll start this. So. Right on 243, I'm going to select everything. I'll turn my overlays back on. I'm going to select everything, and we're actually going to go ahead and scale. Actually, what we'll do first is we'll hover our cursor. Uh, actually, we don't need to do that. We can just hit I in the space here. Turn on scaling, so insert a scaling keyframe, and then we'll go to the uh, first frame. I, scaling, and then we will go ahead and, oop, then we'll go ahead and scroll up so we can see those keyframes. Now, if I zoom in here, scroll in. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to hit S to scale this down just a little bit. Also going to add in a, a location keyframe. So I, location, I, location, and I'm going to rotate this as well. So we're adding a rotation keyframe as well. So I, rotation, I, rotation on both of those. Now we're going to hit RX 180, uh, RX 180 to flip it completely upside down. Move it down a little bit and scale it. Hit zero on my numpad, scale it all the way down. Now it's gonna gonna, gonna be kind of off center. So uh, let me turn auto keyframing on right here by hitting this little button. Hit I for rotation, I for scaling. Now if we play this, you can see they all kind of come up, uh, which is pretty sweet actually. Um, but they're in different locations. The reason for this is because when we move them, we move them all together. So the location is staying the same because when we scaled them in, it didn't take that as a change of location. So uh, what we can do is we can actually just move the letters themselves. So I'll go ahead and select the uh, white piece right there, and we will move this inward to about right there. And since auto keyframing is on, we don't need to add a keyframe because it did it by itself. So the S is kind of coming out like that. We'll grab the T, go to the first frame, and move it inwards like that. We'll grab the Y. Of course, you're trying to grab the white piece, of course, because that's the part that moves everything together. Hit G, move it to the center, and then the same thing with all of the other letters as well. So something like this, we'll move them all together. The I could, the L could go in a little bit more, about right there. And the N, and a little bit more than that, and the apostrophe as well. So there we go, move that in there. Perfect. All right. So now when they, they kind of come out and they kind of flick up like that, which is sweet. It's kind of stagnant right now. So when they pop in, they kind of just sit there. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how the letters are coming out. So like the orientation of the letters of the letter S while it's flipping, it kind of comes up like this and swoops up. So if you follow the physics of how the S would move, it would kind of go out. We're going to go out to like frame 160. And it will kind of move like this outwards a little bit more, right? Maybe a little bit less on the on the Z, like that. All right. So now the S kind of does like this, which looks pretty sweet. I also want to go ahead and move some of these keyframes around a little bit, so the S is is kind of coming out too too much too much. At the same time, I want them kind of to go separately, um, but I want the S to go first. So we'll move the T backwards a little bit, and also the Y just so we have some space here. Um, and the L can also go backwards, uh, maybe a couple actually. So we'll kind of stagger these so they kind of come in at different times, which will look pretty sweet. Do something like that, and the N as well. Maybe the end will come in a little bit faster. And then the apostrophe. 